If you have ever watched Rango, then you know what it means for a place to be completely out of water or just dry as hell. Uh, because in this video, we're going to be talking about how xerophytes, specific kinds of plants like cactuses, um, are able to survive in place with nearly no water, completely dry places. So we're going to be talking about transpiration in xerophytes. Transpiration just means sweating, sweating for plants. That's all it means. How plants lose water through sweat. And xerophytes can be broken down into zero, which means dry in Greek, and phytes, which means plants, so dry plants. So examples being, right, a cactus is one of them. Now, the one, ones you need to know, for example, in the IB is um, something called marum grass. Marum grass is basically beach, um, a beach, beach grass, like this. If you've ever been to the beach, you might know what I'm talking about. Kind of like this as well, just like um, beach grass. I don't, I don't know how else to explain it. You have to go to the beach to see what I mean. But basically, what you should know about this one is that it's a xerophyte, and it has some interesting things it can do to um, survive in very dry conditions. Even though there's a whole ocean there, it's dry because it's sandy and it doesn't rain much, okay? And this water, just because it's there, doesn't mean the plants can use it. It's very far away. So, what I want you to know is if we take a look at one of the leaves of this marum grass plant, so let's take a look at it. I zoom into like one of the leaves like this. So this is a leaf. Don't, don't get confused. It's, it's not a stem, okay? It's a leaf. And you notice this leaf is round. This is because normally this leaf can fold up and make a pipe-like shape. You can see the little slit there. In reality, it is capable of folding open just like a normal leaf, but it has a capability of also folding itself closed like a pipe. And you'll see why this is important. So if we now look at this part specifically, so here we look at this part, we can see the this leaf is folded like a pipe. There are some important names you need to know. And I'm gonna talk about why all of these things help a marum grass uh, plant be able to survive in basically no water conditions. So let's start with something called the thick waxy cuticle. So you notice that's basically this green part, the outside part of the of the leaf once it's folded up. So if the leaf folds up, this outer membrane is called the thick waxy cuticle. And so why it's useful is because it is impermeable to water. So when this leaf closes up like this, water will, will have to stay inside the inside the leaf because this membrane is impermeable to water, meaning no water can pass through. So even on a really hot day or a really dry day, this mechanism will help the plant save water both by folding up like this so no water can leave and this thick waxy cuticle is impermeable to water so no water can pass through it and leave into the, uh, into the air or the environment. No sweating can happen through this thick waxy cuticle. Next, we have something called stoma in a pit. Okay, so the stoma, if you if maybe you don't know yet what stoma is, a stoma is the sweat gland of a plant. It is where the plant sweats from. So this right here is a stoma. So let me make it more clear. That little black line there pointing to this part, that's the stoma. And you notice it's very deep, it's in like a pit. This makes it very difficult for the water which leaves the stoma because it has to travel a very long way. It has to travel all the way from here, deep in the pit through this whole gap before it can get into this empty space. So the stoma is really deep. The sweat gland is really deep, meaning it takes long for water to be sweated out. It's like, imagine if your sweat glands were really, really deep into your skin. It would take a lot longer to sweat out, okay? So that's the second important feature. Last one here is leafy hairs. There's hairs, you notice them. These hairs um, basically trap, trap um, water. So for example, let's say um, sweat or water managed to leave the stoma and it goes into the space. These hairs behave like little barriers. So when the water droplet, let's say it left, it comes, it gets trapped. These hairs keep the water um, inside the, the, the plant so it can't leave so easily. So it makes the area more moist, okay? It prevents water loss, okay? That's the other, that's the third important thing. Now lastly, let's say 
um, there was a lot of rain, okay, the, the day before or something like that. So the air outside the plant, so this represents outside the plant, is really, really humid. So there's a lot of water, like it's not dry anymore, okay? For one second, it's not dry anymore. What happens now is there's a plant called a, I mean, a cell called a hinge cell, which is located um, inside the plant, like just randomly everywhere, small cells. Can't see them in this picture, but just know there's a, a cell in here called hinge cell, and it can detect humidity. So if it's really humid um, outside the leaf when it's folded up like this, um, some of the humidity will pass in, right? And so the hinge cell can sense this. And once it's really humid, this hinge cell will signal for the leaf to open up. Okay, so then it will not um, be in the survival mode. It will open up because now the outside is really humid. So that means there's a lot of water. We don't need to conserve water anymore, right? The plant doesn't need to conserve water anymore. So this hinge cell will detect the humid and it will then open up to optimize photosynthesis, right? Because a plant, uh, a leaf does need to um, open up as much as possible. Otherwise, photosynthesis doesn't happen so well. So if it's closed like this, sunlight cannot be absorbed, okay? So therefore, it's important that these hinge cells can kind of uh, respond when the environment is ready and when the environment is good so that this plant can plant leaf can open up and do some photosynthesis like by absorbing um, sunlight, okay? So that's all you got to know. It's a lot of stuff, but that's all you got to know about um, the marum grass because don't just think it only applies to this plant, okay? Because this technique, all of what I'm talking about here, applies to many, many other xerophytes, okay? This is just one example they wanted, uh, they want you to know, okay? Because it's more popular and it's a more common plant. Okay, the second plant we need to know um, that is a xerophyte um, is, so I'm pretty sure, just coming back to this, even, even what you call um, some cactuses can do this technique, okay? So don't just think it's this because obviously, just like you, I've never heard of this name before, right? Like, the IB wants you to know this, okay? I, I've heard of beach grass, but not this before, okay? Now, next one is called the Cressulacean, okay? You've seen probably these as well, and they also exist in very dry environments, okay? And they're kind of like, I re really hard to like describe their texture, but they're really like, they feel plasticky, okay? Now, what are what is special about them that you need to know? What's special about them is, remember under ordinary circumstances, during the darkness, um, your stoma, this is a stoma, by the way, uh, so this is like the sweat gland. You can notice here, it's closed. There's no hole. So during darkness, the stoma is closed, right? This is done to make sure the plant um, conserves water during the night because during the night, there's no sun, so you can't do photosynthesis. So if you lose all your water throughout the night, by the time morning comes and the sun is there, you have no more water to do photosynthesis, right? Do you see my logic? Because you need water and carbon dioxide to do photosynthesis. And if you lose all your water overnight, by the, sun, by the time the sun comes, you have no more and you can't do photosynthesis. Therefore, in normal plants at night, the stoma is closed to prevent water loss. And in the day, it, it opens, right? So, so that now water loss can occur and photosynthesis can happen. Um, now, in, in this kind of... I'm not going to say this name again. It's just probably long... In this kind of plant, this is swapped. So in the night, it's open, and in the day, it's closed. Okay, this is called, um, an important name, it's called the CAM, Chrysusalian Acid Metabolism. And this is done so that, basically, um, if the environment is very dry, right, in the day, and it's really, really hot, you don't want excessive water to be lost because if it's extra warm outside, you're going to lose extra amount of water. So this is done so that during the hot and dry environment, especially during the day, like in a desert, the water, this thing is closed, the stone must close so no water can be lost. Rather, at night it opens because then it can take in carbon dioxide um, um, so that during the day when it's closed, it can do photosynthesis. Okay, so... Just know that in, in this kind of plant, the mechanism is swapped around because it's so hot during the day in their environment that having it open during the day would mean too much water is lost and no water is kept. Okay, so that's all you need to know about zero fights. In the next video, I will talk a bit, little bit about the halophytes, which is plants that live in salty conditions.